What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have something new and exciting and it is, no, not the Lynx, because that's been around for some time, but awesome, the Minx. This is a very small Lynx and something pretty darn awesome, especially if you want something to shoot a lot less hard than the Lynx does, this is where you need to go. So can't wait to show you guys this. All right, you guys, so the Minx is fairly new to the scene. It is something that I believe is still in beta, but you can get your hardware kits from Silver Fox Industries if you want to purchase one. This is a build by a friend of mine that's in our club and one of our admins, and I printed it for him, but he built it, and it's not perfect. We will go over things in a second, but I think we can get it there with a few additions, uh, maybe a new barrel, things like that. But overall, this is a really cool entry into the space, especially if you're looking for a Springer that is gonna shoot, you know, 130 FPS or under. This could probably get up to maybe 150, depending on what spring you put in it. But especially if you want something for HVZ, I think this is a perfect option for you. So pretty excited about this, but I wanna show you guys just how small the Minx is. So in my opinion, the Lynx, this guy right here, is a pretty compact blaster because of its bullpup design. It gives you a lot of barrel length for the size, and that's one of the great things about how this blaster was designed. So you can get this thing to shoot over 250 FPS easy if you so choose because it can utilize such a long barrel and high plunger volume. So that is great, but when you try to tune this thing down to basically under probably 180 or so, it becomes very difficult to get it to stay consistent just because that barrel is just gonna be too long to, to be able to fire a dart out consistently. So that's why we have the Minx. This has a much smaller barrel and smaller plunger tube, so then you can get your FPS down below that 150 cap if you have that in your wars. So, Minx, Lynx, there you go. So obviously it's shorter on both ends. As I was mentioning, the barrel shorter and the plunger volume is shorter, the plunger tube is shorter. And yeah, that is much, much smaller. The Unicorn, another blaster that's really good for, you know, getting your FPS down to like that 150 or below. Unicorn, Minx. The Minx is actually just a little smaller than the Unicorn and that is incredible to me. Uh, pretty cool that it has a smaller, even the barrel length. I mean, not the barrel length isn't smaller, but from grip to barrel is shorter. And then the, the if you have the stock and it's not all the way collapsed, which is, that's basically storage. If you have it just extended to its first thing, it's still a little longer than the Minx is. So pretty interesting. This may be too small for some people. I could see that. But for kids, I think this would be a really awesome blaster if they can't handle the Lynx yet or if you don't want them shooting something as hard as that shoots. This is a great option. It has a much easier prime because of the spring load. Uh, I mean, it is really easy. Seal, we still need to work on a little bit. We'll see what it's doing here. If I can hold the barrel forward here. So I wasn't probably plugging that quite good enough. Let's try that again. So yeah, we still need to work on that a lot. I'm not sure why, because usually my links have a better seal than that. Maybe not 100% ever, but that, that could be better, I think. Not sure what's going on there, but nevertheless, this isn't my blaster, so still some tinkering to be done. All right, so we'll go ahead and go over the features of the Minx if you're not familiar with this platform. Obviously, it's gonna be very similar to the Lynx, but there are a few little changes that are interesting, but we'll get to that in a second. But you have a full Picatinny rail on top. This is obviously a pump action blaster, so you pull that back to prime your blaster, pull forward to load a dart in. 
Obviously this is a, like I said, a bullpup blaster. So your magazine goes back there. The mag release is kind of interesting. You can release it right here and pull out that way. Or you can use your thumb when it's on the grip right here, push that back and then pull out your grip. So that's a little like, extension there. And I think that's really awesome. I really love that feature. And it makes it really easy to do mag releases. You don't have to find this right here when you're in play. But if you prefer that, that's an option too. The two little thumb screws right here are what hold on your barrel. The barrel is sealed into the turnaround with two O-rings that gives it a really nice fit in there. And you shouldn't have any issues with your barrel coming loose during play, as long as you make sure they're tight beforehand. The turnaround is the same sort of design of the blaster I reviewed last week, which was the slab. This was actually the first blaster, well, the Lynx was the first major blaster anyways to kind of feature that kind of system and what made it really popular in the Nerf community. The air goes out through your plunger tube up through the turnaround and then will fire the dart out the barrel this way. So it's a pretty interesting kind of a U-shape air pattern there. And uh, that keeps the blaster a lot smaller than an inline system. So that's pretty sweet. We obviously have our trigger down here, which I feel like has a lot longer trigger pull than the Lynx does, which was one of the issues I think with the Lynx more than anything was sometimes it wouldn't want to release that catch. And I feel like we've made that a little bit longer now, and that seems to be helping. I have no issues with that. Also the catch mechanism has two holes in it and that I believe are speed holes. That was, was not something that was in the previous Lynx, but he has utilized here in the Minx. So that's pretty interesting. I think that's what that is, but I'm not positive. The catch system is slightly different. There's also a small nub on the end of the threaded rod there to help guide it through. We obviously have a trigger guard down here. We've added a little electrical tape so it's not wobbly, but that's one of the things that has kind of always annoyed me about my, my links is this has been a little wobbly, but we just added a little electrical tape and that kind of took care of that issue. The spring we are running in here, I believe is the experimental nine, I think from Silver Fox. I'm assuming it's the nine because it had nine tick marks on it. So I think that means it's the nine. My friend said he thought it was maybe the 10 or 11, but I opened it up and I think it's the nine, but I'm not sure. So it's somewhere in the between nine and 11 range. But nevertheless, uh, there's definitely a few options you could go with with this blaster. And that's really cool. It's one of the things that's great about the Minx and the Lynx. You can utilize so many different types of springs for this blaster. Now this has a slightly smaller plunger tube, so you may have to cut some bigger springs down. I don't think he cut this one down, but you may have to cut down like a K25 if you wanted to use that in here, which is probably more than enough or probably even too much maybe for this, not positive. But there's definitely a lot of springs that Silver Fox sells that will work with this blaster. And uh, definitely contact him if you're interested in a certain FPS. So just like the Lynx, this is also a quick teardown blaster. It has a pin in the front and the back, so it's really easy to get inside of, to take this thing apart, to, re to replace a spring, to, you know, to do pretty much whatever you wanna do to it, to change out a barrel. Everything is very simple. It's also a very simple build, in my opinion. It is a great blaster to build if you've never built one before. I think this is the perfect one to do because it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Also, this has sling points on the back and in the front here if you want to use those. But let's go ahead, take this thing and put it over the chronograph because I'm pretty excited to shoot this thing and see how it does. All right, let's go ahead and put the Minx over the chronograph. I got 15 darts loaded up here and see what kind of performance it's getting. I will say from shooting this thing prior, it is a slight inconsistent and I think it's gonna benefit from a tighter barrel. This is your standard Caliburn inner diameter barrel, which is a loose dart fit. And that I think is hindering performance, at least consistency a little bit. And also, if you tip the barrel down, the dart will slide into the barrel too far and then also lose quite a bit of performance. So I'm gonna try not to tip the barrel down and I may even on the range tilt it slightly up just to keep it more consistent. But if you're gonna purchase one of these, I would recommend going with a tighter barrel but I have not tested that yet, so 
I'm just assuming, and from other blasters, uh, I feel like it'll get a little bit better, be a more consistent performer. But we'll go ahead and put some shots over the chronograph here. 121, 103, 102, 85, 111, 79, Error, that was definitely a, a very low FPS shot, I could tell. 109, 118, 64, 96, 99. That one didn't read, another poor fire, two more. 98. And 115. So like I said, kind of inconsistent, but if you can get consistent 110 to 120, I think this would be perfect for HVZ. Also, I feel like with a different spring, maybe a little more power spring and a tighter barrel fit, you might even be able to get this thing up a little higher than that. So wish I had more of those options to test for you today, but this isn't my blaster, so I haven't purchased any of those things yet. But Maybe I'll have to build one of these for myself because it is pretty cool. But let's go ahead and put some shots on the range. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put some shots on the range with the Minx. It is windy today, so take this with a grain of salt. Obviously the blaster is inconsistent, so that's gonna affect range too. But like I said, I'm gonna arc this slightly up just to hope to get a little more consistency out of the blaster. Hopefully we don't scare the geese. We probably will. That one went way further, no breeze. Oh, that's so much better without the breeze directly into our face. Wow, that was not good. I don't know what happened there, but uh, obviously that was kind of crazy. <laughs> there we go. You can see that barrel. Well, that was a poor shot. Better. Short, very short, very short again. We still got four more. We'll go ahead and shoot them all, especially since some of them weren't into the wind. That one was, that was by far the longest. That one was long, wow. Uh, that one came out. So what I'm noticing is sometimes the dart is not coming out of the barrel straight, which I think is 100% to do with that barrel fit. And if it's, May have to do with the rifled barrel too. This may be maybe too much rifling for a low powered blaster like this. I'm not sure, but I think it's more to do with the barrel and it's just coming out sideways and then it just completely destroys the ranges. When they come out of the barrel straight, they went pretty far. So let's go ahead and check them out. All right, so these lower powered blasters definitely seem to be way more inconsistent. Uh, the Unicorn was, especially when you weren't using bamboo darts. This one seems to be although I think we could fix that, like I said, at least somewhat with a, a barrel swap. Uh, and then obviously even the worker seagull was a little inconsistent and that should be enough power, honestly, in my opinion, not to be that inconsistent. So, but once we got up to like 180, it was very consistent. So you have to match your spring and barrel obviously, but that was that crazy weird shot. That was very, very short, but let's go check these ranges out here. So here's, a couple of the short ones and you know that's only like 50 feet maybe and we got a, another one here but when we got you know there's some in between here that we had some wind but some of these went all the way up here and one went here and another one went here now obviously they were they were slightly angled but that's well over 100 feet so and the wind was not aiding us. Sometimes the wind was pretty, pretty much dead, so that definitely helped. But the, that's a 50 foot spread, which is insane, or more even if you, if you count some of those short ones. I see another one back there that was real short. Uh, obviously those were misfires, but 
very inconsistent. So that is definitely something that needs to be taken care of to make this blaster more usable. Uh, but I think uh, hopefully we can do that with a barrel swap. I apologize for not having that on hand, but you know, this is, this is what you have to do. You have to test things out and figure out what's going on and then make changes. So let's go back to the couch and I'll give you my final thoughts on the blaster. All right, you guys. So I think this little Minx is a pretty cool blaster. I really just need it to be more consistent. It's a big pet peeve of mine. It's very, very inconsistent. So hopefully I'm crossing my fingers that a barrel swap will fix that or at least make that much, much better. I know that it's common for these lower FPS blasters to have issues like this. So it's not unexpected, uh, but I do think that maybe a tighter barrel fit, fit and then maybe using bamboo darts with this blaster will make it much more usable at, in a, you know, a competitive situation. So, and I don't think that using bamboo darts will be a big deal, especially if you plan on using this for HVZ, you're gonna buy brand new darts specific to the blaster you're using. So I don't think that's a deal breaker. If you're using this at a war where you use, you know, a lot of loner darts, maybe you'll have to bring your own darts if you wanna run this and, and have it be fairly consistent. Uh, but more testing to be done. Like I said, we need to get a new barrel for this and see if that you know, will work. Other than that though, the blaster seems really nice. It's basically the exact same thing that you expect from a Lynx. The only other thing that I really noticed to be an issue with this blaster is sometimes when you prime it forward, it wants to push off the barrel. And this one fits kind of loose. It's kind of an older one and fits kind of loose. And maybe it has to do with this barrel too, but Sometimes when you push it forward, it wants to come off, but I didn't have that problem too many times, so that's good. And then we need to work on that seal, but I, I have a, I'm confident that the seal will be fine because it's the exact same design as the Lynx, so I don't understand. If you can get a good seal with the Lynx, you should be able to get a good seal with this. So uh, that's just something that I think we need to tinker with. I think the, I think the trigger pull being a little longer is really nice and that helps that catch move all the way up and have no issues there. Obviously this is a much lighter spring load so I don't know if you'd have that problem as much with a blaster like this anyways but that is one of the biggest problems. Really the only big problem with the Lynx is that trigger pull but that is a pretty big one if you have that issue uh, but I really only have that issue for some reason when I add on the extra goodies to it that that weren't originally meant to be with the Lynx. So my competitive links works flawlessly, so that's also a plus. The other thing that this blaster I don't think will have a problem with, but the Lynx sometimes does, is when you're using larger diameter barrels, it likes to break off the, uh, this part of the catch that pushes the spring. Would like to see that done in metal or maybe a nylon or something like that, because I think if we strengthen that, we wouldn't have that issue but I don't think that'll be too big of an issue. I'm hoping with the Minx because it isn't quite as powerful of a spring, but it does seem to be an issue with quite a few of my Lynx blasters. So keep an eye out for that. You'll get sometimes get some filament in the plunger tube and that obviously can cause issues too. All in all though, if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these, I think you have to build your own right now. I'm not sure if Silver Fox he probably would build you one if you requested for, for it. But uh, uh, yeah, this is definitely something you can buy the hardware kit from his site and then you can print your own parts and build yourself a pretty cool little blaster. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. Then you'll be alerted to when I post a video. Sundays at 10, 10 a.m. Keep your eye out. Also, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.